In this video, we're going to familiarize ourselves with the plugin that allows us to create our data structures, the Content Types Builder. We'll be covering collection types, single types, components, and fields. Let's enter the Content Types Builder using the left navigation. In Strapi, content types are content structures and building these content structures are fundamental to the operation of a Strapi project. This plugin is one way in which we can build them. We have three main content types. Collection types to manage multiple entries of a data structure, for example, articles or comments. Single types to manage a single entry of a data structure, for example, a single page or a menu. Collection types and single types are exposed through an API. Finally, we have components to manage data structures that are reusable in collection types and single types. These can be populated with the many fields that are offered by Strapi. Let's enumerate these fields in order and discuss their typical usage, as well as their input type within the Content Manager. The text field, which is a string type, can be used to store either short text or long text. These can be entered in the Content Manager using either a text field or a text area field, respectively. The email field, which is a string type, can be used to store email addresses. This can be entered in the Content Manager using an input field with input validation to check the format. The rich text field is a string type similar to long text, but it uses a WYSIWYG editor in the Content Manager instead of a text area field. The password field, which is a string type, can be used to store passwords. This is entered in the Content Manager using a text field with its type attribute set to hidden. The number field, which can be configured to store an integer, big integer, decimal, or float. This is entered in the Content Manager using a text field. The enum field, which allows us to specify a list of selectable values. This is selected in the Content Manager using a drop-down list. The date field, which can be configured to store a date, date time, or time. This is set in the Content Manager using a date and or time picker. The media field, which can be used to upload either multiple media items or a single media item. These can include images, PDFs, videos, and so on. The Boolean field, which can be used to store true or false. The default value for this field can also be set to null. This is entered in the Content Manager using a toggle field. The JSON field, which is a string type, allows us to store a JSON object using a JSON editor in the Content Manager. The Relation field. This allows us to define relationships between the current content type and another content type. For example, we could specify a relationship whereby articles are authored by a user. The supported relationships include one-way, one-to-one, one-to-one, one to many, many to one, many to many, and one way, one to many. An arrow in the relationship icon indicates that it's a unidirectional relationship instead of a bidirectional relationship. It's worth mentioning that the name fields within the relation specify the name of the key used to fetch the data and not the key on which the relationship is formed. The UID, which is a unique identifier. The format of this identifier must adhere to the slug format. That is a hyphen delimited alphanumeric string. It can also be auto-generated based on an attached field. The component field, which allows us to include a data structure that has been previously defined in the component section. Clicking the component field will also allow us to create a new component on the fly, as well as use an existing one. A component can be created as a single instance or multiple instances. And finally, 
The dynamic zone field is a scalable area that allows the unlimited selection of components when editing content. Each of these fields have advanced settings that allow more granular configuration of their behavior. Let's demonstrate the various content types with a worked through example. We'll start off by creating our first component so that we can use it in our single types and collection types later. Let's name this component SEO and give it a category that allows us to group our components. For example, page. We can also select an icon that represents our SEO component using the large selection of searchable icons. For example, we'll type in search and pick this one. The purpose of this SEO component will be to manage HTML metadata through the meta tag, including its property and content attributes. So let's add two fields to this component, a short text field named property and a short text field named content. Once we click save, our SEO data structure is now ready to go. Next, we'll create a collection type for our articles and we'll name this article. Let's build a typical article data structure using a short text field for the title and a rich text field for the body. Let's also add our existing SEO component as a repeatable component. This is because we want to add multiple meta tags. We'll name this metadata. Once we click save, our article data structure is now ready to go. Let's refer to the Strapi website for inspiration and build a few more components. Here on the About Us page, we can see a data structure that contains a button within a zone. And on the Contact page, we can see the same data structure that contains a button within a zone that this time contains a description. Let's start by creating a component named Button Zone within the Page category. And add fields to store its title as short text the content as long text, and also a component that we'll create on the fly. We'll name this component button, assign it to the page category, and select a suitable icon. Once created, our component field has it automatically selected. We'll name this field buttons and make it a repeatable component. Let's also add fields to store the title as short text, a content as long text, and a hyperlink as short text. Now we have a data structure that supports storing this type of content. Let's move on to creating our About Us page as a single type. We'll name it About Us. It will have fields to store the title as short text, description as long text, our previously created SEO component as a repeatable component, and a dynamic zone for the page body. In this dynamic zone, we'll use our existing button zone component. You could also create other components and include them alongside each other. Once we click save, our page is ready to go. That's it for this video on the Content Types Builder. You should now have a good idea on collection types, single types, components and fields.